And that particular pathway too, actually, if I didn't get it right, would have given me an opportunity to get go again there. But now I can actually have a go at this one again. So I reckon 16 goes at the front. Um, 16 times 4 equals 64 times 8. I think my next great work, this one's a little trickier. And so I go on to the next activity now and I go down that particular pathway. So I'll show you how this works and how it basically it, how easy it is to create. So we actually have um, primary school students working with this piece of software. So it's the idea normally with Flash, you need to be quite skilled at creating Flash. Um, the idea behind this is that it keeps it really simple. So not only your teachers um, uh, maybe be reluctant, but will find this easy, but even very, very young students will find this relatively easy to work with. So basically, I'm going to work backwards because it makes a bit more sense. But we create our activities, and our activities sit in this page tray down the bottom. Okay? So I'm going to go back and show you how we actually create the activities. But once we've created the activities, we come to this page, which is a sequence page. And if I just zoom this out, you can see the sequence and the pathways. It's a bit like that PowerPoint that I showed you earlier. And this is a sequence that this student can possibly, or any student could possibly go down when they att attempt this particular activity. And I'll show you how I created this and how it all works together. And it basically uses the same principles as web design. So it is actually very, very simple, uh, similar to, to early web design. But if I want the student to start with that, I put that activity at the start there. Remember, I'm going to go back and show you how I created these. Then I want them to have a go at this activity. And so all I do is paste it underneath and click a link. I then want them to have a go at this activity. And then I place it underneath and I click a link. Okay? And that's pretty straightforward. That's a very linear response. Okay? So the students are just going to continue to go through that first activity and they're all going to go down the same pathway. And what we want is that differentiation. So now if I actually bring up another activity, bottom here, and click a link, it automatically stops, drops in this slider. Now, it gives me a slider of 0 to 8, because when I created that activity, I told it, or I didn't actually need to tell it, when I created that activity, it realised that the maximum score that you could get on that activity was 8. So here I've got this slider now, and I can grab that slider, and I can place it anywhere along that. So if I want it to be perfect score before you move out down to the right, then I place a slider down there. If their students get a 7 or score between 0 and 7, they're going to come down this pathway here. I can actually, because there's a maximum score of 8 there, I can actually put, there's a lots of different combinations that could happen. So I can actually, if I want to, place another slide out here and click a link, and then I can have a different pathway going there as well. So I can have 0, 1 or 2 is going to go down this pathway, 3, 4, 5 is going to go down here, and a score of 6, 7 or 8 is actually going to go down over here. And this is how we can set up those different pathways depending on the score. And this one's a score-based activity. I'll show you also how we did that, the, uh, the Billy Goats graph, which was a choice-based activity more so than a score. You can even do things like, if I just delete that, where we might even loop students back up to the top again. And so we can then have them actually going again and repeating that same activity. Hopefully they have more success. They get 0, 1 or 2 again, they're going to, they're going to have a bit of a Groundhog Day happening there. Um, but then you can get 3, 4, 5, they will go down here, 6, 7, 8 going down there. And basically that's what, I've just created a, a second um, sequence over here. That's the way that I created the sequence that you see over there. So we started with a few information pages at the start just to set the scene for that student. They came down the middle, they had get attempt at the first activity. If they got full scores, they actually went down this pathway and they went down the more difficult pathway. If they, if in the case that I did, I got it wrong, I was sent to this activity, which is a little bit easier for me to do, and then I got it right, so I looped back around back to the start again. And you can see it, it's quite easy to set up these pathways. What I can also do with these then, I mentioned, uh, so we looked at this as being the non-linear effect of it. Um, we looked at uh, differentiation. And I mentioned one of the other things was to be able to provide feedback. Here, along any of these pathways, I can set feedback. But all I need to do is I just grab my uh, sorry, wrong button here, grab my feedback feedback circle, and just drop it onto a line. And when I drop it onto the line, the line turns green. And so this one over here, I'm going to give, or give the student relatively good feedback because they've got a, a high score there. So when I let go of that, 
I can put that feedback as either just text or image. And actually, if I go into, or text and image, if I go into that, I can even add audio into that as well. So if you wanted to have chimes going when they were right, or um, even maybe your voice recording there to say, well done, you could actually put that in there. You could also just put some, you can just type whatever you, comments you want in there. And you can also add um, an image, and there is actually a gallery of images that you can add from, or you can just navigate to your computer and add any other image that you might want to add in there as well. Uh, you can see you've got a few options down here as well, so you can set it so if the student actually uh, was attempting the activity again, um, we will allow them just to remove just the errors and leave everything that was right in the right place and then actually go back and just make the changes to the things which were wrong. Uh, we, can, we can have the students know the score or not, so it's not necessarily, um, it's not necessarily to show the score, um, and we can allow them to reset. Uh, as far as the report at the end, all we need to do is grab a report, place it at the end of a line, and then we play and we click there. Same kind of thing, when the student goes down this pathway, they get 6, 7 or 8, they attempt this activity, after attempting that activity, they get a report. So it's really very easy, it's almost um, very 3D, similar to Scratch, how you just build up things and you just drop things into the right place. And uh, Don Collins showed something earlier, was it, um, I can't remember what the name was, but he showed something earlier that was, yes, that was, yeah, was it, uh, how did say? Goolify. Goolify, that was it. And he had the kind of, it's the same kind of 3D, very easy visual for students to work with. So how do I create the activities? So let's go back. That is a ready-made one, but I'll start a new one here. So basically, we work with off this template system. And I say templates, but it is a very flexible template system here. What you're actually doing is not so much choosing a template, but an activity type that you want to use. So you can see that the choices that you have. You can do drag and drop activities. Sorting, where we actually, uh, maybe like Venn diagram um, sort of activities where you're placing things into particular categories and you can have more than one thing going to a particular space. Um, ordering, fill the gap, questions, linking lines, flashcards, and I'm going to show you a couple of these, so let's jump into them. Let's have a look at an ordering activity. So this is my blank canvas and how I can create my activity here. <coughs> Over here is basically my activity and what I see, I create the activity correctly. And what Fuse will do is actually jumble it up or remove the answers and do all the kind of the, the back end for us. Okay? So here for example I'm going to create an ordering activity. In the top left hand panel here are all the objects I can place on the page. The bottom left are all the ways that I can make changes to anything that I place. And then again my pages just sit down the bottom here. So first thing I want to do is place some objects that I want to order. And I can either do a Vertical or horizontal, I'm going to do a vertical, and I just click and link, uh, put it onto the page. I can specify how many things I want to change. I'll keep it simple just so we have, um, don't waste too much time. But now here are my three things that the students are going to order. So that number one I created in the same way here, but I placed, I placed five um, things to order there. When I click onto a space, I get these three icons down the bottom. These three icons in indicate I can either put an image in here, I can either put audio in here, or I can put text, or I can put a combination of all three of those, or any two of those if I wanted to. And if I click on an image, it actually takes me straight through to a gallery bank. So I'll just grab a, an animal from the, um, from the gallery bank here. We'll do a bit of an uh, alphabetic order activity, we'll keep it really simple. So I'll put an aardvark in here, but the same way if I clicked on audio, I'll be looking for MP3s. And if I clicked on text, I could actually type aardvark in here. And there we go. And I can go through with the text. You can see here, when I click onto the image, I get the image properties. When I click onto the text, I get the text properties. So the properties over here are changing in context to whatever you are working with. If I click onto the page, I get the page um, features there that I can change. So let's go through. I'll just quickly add some other animals. So I open. And you can see the... the the file types that you put in there are all your kind of standard images that you'd want, you would want to use. You can even put um, flash within this. So if you have mini flash activities that you want to actually put within here, or a video, so that video of the digestive system, for example, I just converted to flash and, that, and put that in there as a flash file. Uh, so I'll put a bear into this one, and I'll put, um, 
another animal of sorts into this one. Oh, can't all make it obvious. There we go. And if I wanted to, I could put borders and head I can put some text on here so I can drop some a heading on here and give this a, a title if I wanted to. I could put other images. I could also adjust the colours of the borders here. So you'll see in a moment I'll put red and I'll point out what where that is. I can put feedback, I'll just click all of these buttons. So I can put feedback where it's that the feedback where is three out of four, two out of three, or marking where it will actually tick the things that you're right and cross the things that you're wrong for me. And I can also take the back button off if I want to, so students can't actually go back through an activity. They can only go forwards. At any time I can preview my activity now. So there's my activity, there's the red that I chose, that's what I meant by I could change the colour of the border colour there. And now all I do is I place them into the order. So I'll get it wrong to start, and it automatically knows I've got zero out of three. And because I've placed three objects on there, that's how it knows if, I'm, if I place that into the sequencer, sequencer page at the end, it would have given me a slider between zero and three. Okay. If I get it right, about panel there, it gives me a score of three out of three automatically. Now one of the things with this too, I'm not sure if you noticed, is each time I went into there, it was actually changing the order of these objects as well. So it's not just a matter of one goes to three, two goes to one, and that kind of thing, and students start to realise where it's going. It's totally random each time. Okay, so it's not a matter of them to kind of learn, learn not learning the, they're learning the information, but just learning where things go. And basically, each page works in a very similar way. So if I click on New now, um, I'll do a drag and drop, seeing that the first one there. The, drag, the idea behind a drag and drop is it's a labelling kind of exercise or a grouping exercise. So I'm going to place one object from one place to another. So it might be a, a location on a map somewhere, or it might be uh, a word and it's meeting next to each other, or it might be uh, lots of different things, but basically pairing things together. Then you're dragging one thing and dropping it onto another place. So here, I've got two objects. This is my drag item, and this is where it's going to go. And I can actually click and I can adjust these things. Oops, I can go to the edge of it. There we go. And in the same way, whenever I click onto an object, I get those three icons. So if I click onto there, I'll just choose an image of sorts, a robot, there we go. And in this one, I might put the text, robot. Obviously, I'm going fairly quickly through this, so I'm not going to pretty it up, but obviously I can change the size, I can take the borders off. Let's put a different one in there, so make this a little bit more difficult. So these pairs, um, choose something different. Light bulb, that'll do. And in this one, I would actually type light bulb. Okay, that's really going to trick him if I do that. I can even put some red herrings in there if I wanted to. So this is something that can be dragged, but it necessarily doesn't. Not going to necessarily give a give a right answer. So again, we'll just pop something in here. I'm just staying with images to start with. And now, when I preview this page. These objects can't be moved, these objects can. If I pick them up and place them onto a, where I think they go, and click on next, it gives me a score of 1 out of 2. Whereas if I got it right again, I would have got a score of, uh, that one, that one, leave the red herring. But next gives me a score of 2 out of 2 straight away. And again, so if I go back to my sequencer page now, the one that I created over here. So if I wanted to, so now these pages appear down in my tray. If I wanted to, I can actually add these to my sequence. And I have something that loops up. And we'll have another way if it goes like that. And you can see there, because it was a maximum score of 3, it automatically drops in the slider of a score of 3 there. And I can place that little, that centre piece wherever I want to go to indicate which direction the students go after they completed a particular choice. So you can see there the different activity types um, that you can do. If I go back up to here, the, the Billy Goat Scrum <coughs> example wasn't based on a score. It was based on a choice of the direction of where the students were going to go. That's called a menu page. 